Hey guys and welcome back to Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. It is now time to head into the more advanced exercises. There's no more hand holding. Well there's a little bit of hand holding but for the most part we are now making these parks ourselves. So first up we have Open Range Safari. Create an open range wonderland for your herbivores. However, there are a few alterations we're going to be making once this mission begins. So the thing with these, with the advanced tutorials, in some cases a park has been partially built for you, in other cases it's just the island and you have to start from scratch. On this occasion we're going to start with a massive big enclosure, hence the name, and a park entrance. But like with the next one, there's nothing there. The one after, the next two after that, the park is mostly already made up for you. And then the last one, we're starting from scratch. Unlike the main campaign, apart from the last advanced exercise, all of these do have a set number of dig sites unlocked. So this one will already have three from the beginning, as will the next one, the next two after that, and then the last one you're free to choose. Over the course of these exercises and the main campaign, I do want to have a park that includes every single dinosaur. So that's all 25. I think we should be able to do that. With the dig sites that we use in all of these, uh, the two, that, what I have planned for the final exercise, and then the main campaign, we should be able to get through all nine dig sites. Of course, the problem here is the PS2 version, you can only use three dig sites at a time. I mean, I'm pretty sure in every version the exercises are the same. But otherwise, yeah, we, we are limited to just three dig sites at a time. InGen would like to create a family experience with a large open range herbivore enclosure for everyone to enjoy. We have laid out a grand open range enclosure for you to populate with herbivores. InGen has a list of herbivores they would like to see exhibited, and would also like an authentic experience for visitors. Which is a rather counterintuitive mission. So we have to exhibit six Dryosaurus, three Stegosaurus, two Camarasaurus, four Parasaurolophus, four Taurosaurus, two Brachiosaurus. We also have to construct four herbivore feeders, four viewing platforms, a safari adventure ride, and we have to score 70% authenticity for said safari adventure ride. Also, a performance report at the moment just says this. Welcome to the team. We look forward to seeing what you can accomplish. Now that's a bit counterintuitive because the Taurosaurus and Parasaurolophus are from the Cretaceous. Which means that that's going to lower the authenticity. Authenticity is basically how realistic the enclosure is. This is basically... It's sort of a both for the fun lover visitors as well as the dino nerds. Not sure which one more. Not sure which one it really favours more, but uh, that that's the idea. Now we have two difficulties here. Well, two two dif two issues. Number one, uh, you can't alter the uh, whatever it is you're. But well, basically, with the viewing platforms and the viewing vents, and I think the viewing domes as well. You can change what the uh, what the thing is for. You can change it so it's mostly for thrills, so it's mostly for fun, so it's mostly for authenticity. You can't do that with the Safari Adventure Ride, so it's a lot harder to actually score that 70%. I'm not really sure what you'd call it. Change, change what it favours it's supposed to be, I don't know. And the other thing is, because it needs to be realistic, the dinosaurs need to be from the same time period in the same region. But we have to have Taurosaurus and Parasaurolophus. Now I don't think they actually have to all be in the same exhibit. We can do like a separate exhibit for Taurosaurus and Parasaurolophus. Or we can just try and make them be like the last two things we do. Also having the feeders in the enclosure that also lowers the authenticity. Feeders and hatcheries they lower it down. The dino nerds, they want there to be as little in there as possible. I don't know what exactly they're expecting. How do they know that we have paleo trees? And we do, we have paleo trees. And the problem there is that paleo trees are really expensive to make. But they do increase the authenticity and supposedly lower the chances of the dinosaurs getting the gastric poisoning disease. Now what I'm doing here is I'm destroying the entire, almost the entire exhibit. You see I cut off 
just a small bit. And that's because the dinosaurs in this game, they have a bit of weird AI, or a bit of weird programming at least, where they always tend to go down to the same part of the island. Like, they always go down to this corner. They will all gather around in this one corner here. Occasionally they will spread out a bit, but for the most part they will just stay there. And I realised the first thing I should have done is put my, is send out my dig teams. What am I doing? Let's send out our dig teams. Or some formation B, because we want Brachiosaurus. We don't need to worry too much about the dinosaurs going to 100% DNA. This is not Jurassic World Evolution, where the, uh, there's a viability thing. No, the, dinosaur, the dinosaurs are guaranteed to live. All the DNA does is just it affects how long they're going to live for. What we do want, however, is a small... What we do want, however, is something that provides them with the, the dinosaurs with something to drink. Otherwise, they, they tend to die if you don't do that. And that's not very good. We don't want them dying. It's, they cost money. In general, in general, we don't want them to die. We want them to die. Apart from when you're doing the... Uh, the range of missions that require them to die. That looks ugly. I didn't want to make this a straight line. <laughs> but uh, I can't bother to fix it right now. So let's build a hatchery and get the dinosaurs on the go. We already have three dinosaurs at 100% DNA, which is good. So we have Dryosaurus, we have Stegosaurus, and we have Camarasaurus. So let's start with the small and simple. Okay. Need six of these guys. Do I add the feeders in yet, or do I just hope that they eat the trees? You know what, let's add the feeders in. Right. Let's just add these in for now. We can get rid of these later on. One down here. One over here. And one over here. Great to see you again. Ladies and gentlemen. Announce that the gentle Jurassic herbivore, Dryosaurus, is now on display. Lovely. Hello. It's still weird how this is the smallest dinosaur in the game, and yet it has visible eyes. Oh, you're adorable. I find it a bit weird that your head is that colour compared to the rest of your body, but I don't know why, because loads of animals are like that. Right, let's get this research going. We're not going to be able to open the part before we get our first quarterly performance because I'm going too slow at this. So let's get the uh, the visitor stuff on the way. Now I did do a practice run of this and let's just say it wasn't going well <laughs> because my visitors kept getting so angry over a lack of food because I had a kiosk right here and they just completely ignored it. it to the visitors that kiosk was just not there. Occasionally they'd use it, but not very much. So I had to I ended up having to build two more kiosks. So I think that's what we're gonna have to do again here, which is annoying because kiosks cost money. Don't want that. Of course, I've still also got to get out of my Jurassic World Evolution mentality. Because so, I keep trying to use the D-pad to bring up all the construction stuff, and it's not. It's the square button. And I just recently, I went back onto Jurassic World Evolution for a bit. And what's the first thing I do? I hit the square button to bring up the manager menu. And yet, the moment I go back to this, I'm back on the evolution thing again. It's like, how, does, how do I do that? How, how is that possible? What am I doing? Okay, so we need four viewing platforms. And again, your dinosaurs always go to the same corner of the island, so you want to spread these things out. And one more of those. Ooh! Right from the start. Hello. Good choice. This is my third time doing this. The first time around I got no Brachiosaurus at all. The second time around I got loads of it. Which one's it going to go with? My bet's on the first one, despite that initial Brachiosaurus spe specimen. 
If only it was. If only we could really find these specimens this easily. Because like Brachiosaurus is known from one specimen, one fragment. Because what we thought was a Brachiosaurus in Tanzania, we now call Giraffe Titan, and that is that is the one we're making in the game as well. You can dig up Brachiosaurus in the Tendaguru beds as well. Because at the time it was Brachiosaurus, we now call it Giraffe Titan. Alright, amenities. So let's get a kiosk here anyway. So I have one there. I have one down the middle here. And then we'll have another one over here. This should keep our visitors moderately happy. And whenever you have a kiosk, build some toilets. Which are only now being added into evolution. I don't know why it was really a complaint, because my logic was surely in Jurassic World Evolution your buildings are things like restaurants and big shops and stuff like that. So surely the logic would just be that the toilets were inside the buildings. You know, this is a takeaway. But in evolution you can actually go inside the buildings. So I don't know why people were making such a fuss about it, but uh, hey. We've now got the toilets coming to evolution. At the, risk of, at the risk of dating this video, let's give this one a dino dog and some flint chili. So at the risk of dating the video, by the time that the DLC actually comes out, which I'm really excited for. And I keep you the same. At the moment they're all gathering up here, which is unusual. I hope you can see these dryosaurs. Okay, good, you can. So the thing I meant was, if you change this, change the name, and you can you can alter it a bit. So let's set these ones to fun, because these things we don't need to be authentic. The problem is you can't do this with the. Are you finished yet, Woo? You can't do that with the Safari Adventure Tour or the Balloon Tour. Yeah. Which is annoying. So you're not really sure what the rating is. Like It may say 70, but is it actually 70 authenticity or is it just 70 overall? Now what I do want to try and do for every one of these exercises is get to 5 stars. It's not necessary for any of them, but I do want to try and get to 5 stars. Why is it still making the sound effect? There we go. So, these are always the first two things I get. Cash machine and weather guard. Ooh, that's, that's got a heat wave coming. Ladies and gentlemen, we are excited to announce the release of our latest attraction, Stegosaurus. This famous Jurassic herbivore is known and loved the world over. Please enjoy. Come on out, you rather ugly thing. I was never too big on the Stegosaurus in general, but this thing just looks ugly. Yeah, you know, it's the, I think it's the face. The face, to, it, it's barely got a face. Like, those aren't like real eyes or anything. It's just a, it's just a dark green dot. I like the, I like the attention to detail in that it's got a beak, but that is it, and the plates are. I don't like the place that much either. Also, you're dragging your tail on the floor, and that's wrong. What are your I mean, that's nothing new. Good choice. <laughs> Inaccurate dinosaurs in Jurassic Park? What's next? You're going to be telling me the Velociraptors were actually half the size? Or that the Dilophosaurus was like three times as big, and then it didn't have those frills or the venom? Or that the Brachiosaurus couldn't chew and rear on its hind legs? What are you going to tell me next that the, if you stood still, the T-Rex would eat you? Jurassic Park. Not the place to go if you want accurate dinosaurs. And they try to make the defense for that in Jurassic World. No. Because that was not the intention originally. So they're starting to make their way down the park now. Why is this one's fun so much lower than the other one? So like gradually they'll make their way down here. Hello again. So what we want is we actually want to have these things on the paleo bales. They're more expensive, but they're healthier. 
message from Dr. Wheel. Yep. Dilophosaurus is going to be the one we get the most. Whichever dinosaur is the lowest rating in the dig site is for some reason the one that you're going to get the most of. It, that makes no sense, but that's how it works. So like because we're in Morrison, I sent them some Morrison information B, the main thing we're going to get is Dilophosaurus because it's only two stars. The next one will be Camarasaurus because it's three stars and then the rarest should be Brachiosaurus. And it's like that for every single dig site. I think it's, that, that is how many Stegosaurus we need, isn't it? Yep, three Stegosaurus, we just need two Camarasaurus. We'll open the park when he's eventually done over here. It is, but it's not coming together fast enough, Henry. Great to see you again. Still. Why do I keep doing that? It's, it's in the same thing. Okay. They're gradually making their way down. Come on, girls. Stay up here, please. Just so the visitors aren't going... I mean, the visitors are going to go down here anyway, but... I don't get why they all just gather in this one section of the island. This is why you just don't bother with the great big enclosure. Because they're all going to do that. It's going to go into that one corner. Ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to announce the arrival of our newest dinosaur, the Jurassic Herbivore, Camarasaurus. Nature lovers should put this gentle giant on their must see list. Hello. So you're kind of cute, because you, for starters, you have actual eyes. Right. So now we're going to go into a heat wave. Yeah, so because we haven't opened the park, this is what we get. We are disappointed with your lack of progress. You must create some dinosaurs and open Jurassic Park to the public. You must do this as soon as possible. Yeah, he's really rude, by the way. I, I hate that line. That if you could drag yourself away from the park, we'd like to speak with you. I mean, I despise the arrogant character. I, I, I can barely stand watching them in anything. Now, Peter Ludlow. I, wonder, I don't know if he's actually arrogant. He's greedy, I know that. But he's like in this. And sadly, we can't set a T-Rex on him here. Ooh! Oh, God. Unique quality amber. Now, the risk with amber is that you can either sell it for a huge amount of money or you can extract DNA from it. But you don't know what the DNA is going to be because if it's Camarasaurus, that is a waste of $11,500. If it's Dilophosaurus, that's okay. If it's Brachiosaurus, that's amazing. We're going to go with it. I'm going to go for it. Because if, if that ends up being Brachiosaurus... Then that pretty much gets us up there because I think Amber can have like up to forty-five percent DNA if it's unique quality, like that one is. And we've already excavated one specimen. Then up this to three hundred. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to declare the newest wonder of the modern world, Jurassic Park, now open. Thank you. Congratulations on opening the park. You've got the potential to make Jurassic Park the greatest theme park in the history of the world. Unlike what visitors want, however, we have to wait for them to come here. The more expensive your park, the more visitors are going to come. Sorry, the less visitors are going to come. So I've set it to 300, so it might be a bit less than it would be at the standard 200, but we get a little bit more money. It's not the fossil market. Have we got any Brachiosaurus? No, we don't. Potentially that one. Yeah, buying the fossils still costs twice as much as it would to sell them. Just like, just like building anything. You can demolish these things. And really, I, I'm pretty sure if you demolish something, that should still cost you money. But apparently in these games, they always seem to just be that you gain money. But only half the amount. Ah, oh, it's Dilophosaurus. It's good to see. So, still not quite there. I mean, we're going to have the carnivals in here for the sake of getting the five-star racing. We are going to have the carnivals. So we'll have Dilophosaurus, we'll have Ceratosaurus, we'll have Acrocanthosaurus. 
you know, we've got this massive space, we may as well make some use of it. We're just not using it because otherwise the dinosaurs, that, that squarish bit down in this corner that I deleted, that's where they'd all be gathering. That and the fact that the safari adventure ride can only go a total of 800 meters, which is like this distance down here, that's probably a good 600 meters. So not only do we have to, not only can it not go all the way down, we've got to make sure that it's got to make it all the way back up again. I don't know who thought 800 meters was a good enough size. What's the point of having this massive, enormous enclosure if the safari adventure ride can only go a tiny portion of it? I mean, you can have multiple safari rides, but you can't have this many. I realize I'm not actually researching anything. Do you not? Know Let's just go on with it. Yeah, we're fine at the moment. We will need to research the uh, visitor shelter at some point for when a twister comes. But at the moment, we're fine. So during heat waves, your dinosaurs do need water much more often. You also need to have... This is also where your kiosk can be important. I have had visitors. They will die of starvation or lack of water. Let's see. You are Sharon from Hawaii. I wish I haven't seen much yet. You only just got here. You are Dimitri from Vermont. I don't know where that is. Andrew from New Mexico. And Sarah from Austria. Oh, so they do come from... Uh, like, so far, all my practice runs and everything, all of my guests have been from America. Like, they're all from a US state. You now, including Hawaii. They've all been from America. Like, this is the first time I've had a guest from a non-American country. And I need some cleaners because my park's getting dirty already. So let's also get started with all the other stuff I've been completely neglecting. So longer paths, bins. Very important. You are going to want to spread them out though. Because you can only build 20 of these things. It's a ridiculously small amount. And there's like no alternative either. With the benches you at least get... Rest, you can at least research rest areas. But for bins, there's no alternative. Te technically, that's what the cleaner station is the alternative for. But that also requires your cleaners to actually get down here in the first place. And your guests will make everything dirty. It's like, why 20? That's what I don't know. We've already used up 12 of these things. I mean, in the end, we don't need that much more space for the other three enclosures that we're going to have. Like I could just build them down here. What are your instructions? But still, what's the point? Silver! Hey! <laughs> Wrong button! That's that mentality. It's the evolution mentality again. But it's, it's partially the evolution mentality, and it's also the fact that because this game is on the PlayStation 2, back then, triangle was the back button and circle was for everything else, whereas nowadays, like from the PS3 onwards, circle is back. Well, triangle is uh, for other functions. I don't know why they made the change. Now that you have dinosaurs in your park, you should build a ranger station. You will need rangers in your park to manage your dinosaurs. Yes, he is right about that. Let's start with the benches first because our visitors will get tired. You can't place benches and bins on the same bit of path. You can place the benches right next to your bins. I don't know. I don't know who would actually want to uh, sit next to a bin, but I've seen bins next to benches before. It's the wrong one. If we add more to that path, that bench will just move. It'll be something like that one right there. And yeah, later on we'll add in the uh, uh, rest area when we get to it. Again, 12. We're going to only have 20 of these, but we're going to have 500 of these. I don't get it. I can understand not having to have, not requiring the full amount, but still. Angela from Michigan. Sarah from Wyoming. The rest of the start. From North Dakota, Hawaii. Yeah. It's mostly America. But occasionally, they, but we seem to have one person from Austria. I don't know where Vermont is. His name's Dimitri, so is it from Russia or is it just a name? I mean, you can have a Russian in America. 
<laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. See, this is what this is the problem with this design. It's like. She's really hungry, but I don't know if she's going... And her happiness is going down, but I don't think she's going to reach that kiosk in time. Once they're really unhappy, they turn around and they just walk out. So, she's really hungry. The question is, is she going to get there fast enough? If you want to know where the dinosaurs are, girl, have you considered using this thing? It's like they're pretty easy to spot. Like this guy. This building is really good value for money. You wouldn't believe that by looking at him, but you should get more satisfied now. Buys himself a burger. And that should do it. So now he should get happier. I'm hoping. The businesses are also really dumb. They don't really know where they're going. Again, guys, what is this? Right here. You're just blatantly ignoring it. I get that you're not actually hungry at the time, but still, you are you are just ignoring it. Let's just get this thing built. Ranger station. Super, super expensive. That new ranger station will be a great addition to our security facilities. You should come over and take the chopper for a spin. You never know, we might need your flying skills in an emergency. Yeah, you, we can immunize dinosaurs. Like, we can, we can just set them to get immunized. It's, it's, it's hunger, it's, it's food thing is going down, but it's eating the fence. So we can't, so if you, if you hover over a dinosaur, that's the fence. You can hit orders and you can set it to do one of these things. We haven't researched any diseases yet, so there's not really anything we can do about it. So it's, it's not going to work until we've researched everything. You're getting there. Safari Adventure takes two months. Most things take one month, a few things will take two. It's mainly the more expensive ones, I find. The more expensive or the more necessary things, except for the business shelter. That only takes, that's very necessary and it only takes one. So that, let's see, one month, so that, that's a good one, so it takes two. Attractions, these are all, this one's not necessary. These two are both good, so they take two months. These are all useful, but they only take one, except for the um, immunizer. Makes them immune to any dinosaur, to any disease right from, right from the moment they're born. These aren't too surprising because these are also the two most expensive things to build. They're all one month. And then these are all one month except for rabies and gastric poisoning because they're the two most serious. Right, so we have storms approach the island. For the most part, storms aren't really that much of a problem. It's twisters that are a problem. But like here, it's, it's not so bad. They can, on very rare occasions, cause a minor damage to some of your buildings. But I do mean it, it is minor. Like, it is not a problem in the slightest. Yeah, see? This place is pathetic. I'm leaving. I have towers! Why don't you people just use them? It's because she wants food, isn't it? Yeah, never mind these three kiosks that I have. See, this is what keeps happening to me. I think eventually it should get better the moment we get the uh, safari adventure ride in here. But for now, I don't think we're going to get very far. Come, I guess. Come. Also, the storm always plays the same dramatic music. While the storm doesn't really do much to your buildings, do check the fence. Then you can perform maintenance. It tends to always be $19 to fix it. Again, storms, not really a problem. They're supposed to stress out your dinosaurs, but I find it never makes any difference whatsoever. Herbivore or carnivore. Yeah, so here they go. They're all gathering down in this corner now. Fine, get out of my park. I don't want you here anyway. 
are very worthwhile. So why are you getting miserable? What about you, Shane? Wow, that was great. You haven't seen anything, but that was great. I assume you mean your sandwich? Or did you just go to the toilet and you thought that was great? I mean, I don't blame you. That, that is a good thing to do. Yeah, so my authenticity is actually higher here. That is a good sign when your authenticity is going up. Well, let's have the thrill seekers happy in some regard. Oh yeah, this is a lot of fun. Check it out, it's Kamarasaurus sleeping. Gold! Always believe in your soul! Oh, wait, I needed that. <laughs> yeah, this, this is what can occasionally happen. But it happens very rarely. 16666. Is that a bad sign? Right, we can now build a Spari I'm surprised my racing hasn't gone up yet. Usually your racing goes up really fast. Right, so we'll get started on the next thing. So let's get let's get the uh, visitor shelter. We'll get the visitor shelter and then we'll start working on diseases. Because diseases are very important. We've got every, everything else we now have. So, next up we will start working on our safari adventure rides. So, I will see you guys 